So far, our blog posts are fairly simple. If we actually click on one of them, what we see is just some plain text, right? We don't see a whole lot of data that's actually coming through on this stuff. And even if we wrote a bunch of data, so if I come in here and edit it, of course, I am logged in. If you're not logged in, you're not going to see this. And I just added some new stuff in here and just some test data. Um, let's actually even just grab some random code and paste it in here. It's not really going to look that great, right? So this is kind of how the blog was set up. It was just plain text that's coming through here. It doesn't render any HTML. It doesn't do any of that stuff. So if I actually wanted to make this an HTML form, or that is allow HTML to show up, it's really simple actually. So if we go into our post detail HTML template, we can simply add something on here inside of the content. Instead of just line breaks, we can also add safe. So that safe filter here will basically change the way something is rendered. So let's save that. And I'm gonna come back in and edit this again and get rid of all that jumbled text and now say just h1, hi there, and close off h1. Go ahead and create the post. It's not rendering, so let's get rid of line breaks and just keep safe. And I refresh and now it actually renders um, what is inside of that content. So the safe filter itself allows us to do that, uh, which is kind of cool. So that means we can actually use HTML um, directly in here. But the problem with HTML is you, well, you kind of have to know how to write HTML to make it look good. And also it, it's, it just takes too long. Like writing out actual HTML takes way too long. So what we want to do is use a different type of HTML rendering system called Markdown. Now Markdown is a basically a really quick way to render out HTML code by just writing some things out. So as we see here, um, we see H1, H2 and all this. This is actually what we're gonna be implementing. So first and foremost, all I'm gonna do here is just copy this stuff right here and I'm going to paste it in here. I'm gonna create this post and now what I see is this right here. Um, that's, what we, that's, that's exactly what we expect to see, right? It should show us that. It says safe, but it's not actually breaking everything up because we got rid of that line breaks one. So let's bring that back out. And now the line breaks are back in here. But we want it to actually render just like this. So this is actually how it's rendered on using Markdown. So Markdown is just basically taking in these different sort of tags and then rendering it in a different way. In this case, it's rendering it in H1, so headers. And you can also do this for lists and all sorts of things. These we'll understand more as we go forward in the next few videos because we're gonna be implementing Markdown into this post so we can actually see it in another way. Now, there are a couple ways on how you can actually render Markdown. What I'm gonna be doing is rendering it with JavaScript. I don't wanna render my Markdown with, I don't, I don't wanna render my Markdown using Django because I think the Markdown, the raw syntax of the Markdown is really useful that our front end, that is our client, what the user see, they should actually be able to work with JavaScript itself. And that's just the easiest way to actually render it as we'll see here in just a second. So what I wanna look at is in my base.html, I wanna make sure that I have jQuery installed. Um, right now I don't, I just have bootstrap in here. So I wanna actually bring in jQuery for its library functions. So we'll just do code.jQuery.com and this will bring us in this this JavaScript library known as jQuery. It's really powerful. I'm gonna be using jQuery core 1.12 and I'm just gonna grab the minified version and copy the code that they give us and paste it right above bootstrap. So what we have here is just basically grabbing the script to use some jQuery. The next thing I wanna do is grab a library called marked. So this library, if we look at it, um, allows you to parse and compile Markdown. And it's it's small and it's built for speed, as it says. It's a really easy way to actually just go ahead and use Markdown inside of your project with JavaScript. So it's gonna render things the way we want it to. Um, we don't actually have to follow their installation process. Instead, what we could do is use a CDN. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do marked.min.js CDN. 
So I'm looking for the content delivery um, network of the marked library. So if I click on it, this is it. This is the one that we want to use right here. It's the same as what's on GitHub. It's just we don't have to install it on our local computer. There's a lot of advantages to this that we're not going to get into, but using a CDN basically speeds up things for us um, overall. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this code or at least the link to it. And I'm going to put it underneath bootstrap this time. And I'm just going to do script source and we'll put it in there just like that. Um, so what this is doing is it's grabbing that library and it's going to allow us to implement a function that's going to allow us to render our actual content to mark it down. So that is our content in here, right? So I'm gonna add a new class in here and I'll just say content markdown. So that means that I want to actually mark down this content at some point. So back into our base, I'm gonna add a new script in here. So script, we can use that tag just like that. And now we're just gonna implement our simple jQuery function. So we'll do $document.ready function and there we go. So this syntax right here is how you'll start a jQuery function most of the time, or a lot of times. Basically all I'm saying is document, once the page is loaded, run this function or run whatever is about to happen. Um, now, the way jQuery, jQuery works is it uses a selector. So we can actually grab something in the HTML and do something to it. So the reason we added content markdown is because that is a way to select this content. So we can actually copy that class and we'll go into base.html, dollar sign, quotes, dot, content markdown. So that's the syntax for using a class of some kind. So any sort of class here. So we, we could do container, um, right? You could do that as well, just like up here. Um, so any class name there, but of course, I'm gonna be using content markdown. And most specifically, I want to use the text inside of content markdown. So the text is anything inside of the tag itself. So we've got the div tag here. So it's basically anything in here that's probably not gonna be HTML text. Um, granted, it's not gonna be treated as HTML text, even though our content itself might have HTML, but it's gonna be treated as a string because we don't have it as safe here. So just keep that in mind. So any text or the value inside of that is what we're gonna be changing here. So inside of our base, we're going back in there. We now wanna create a variable for that, and I'll just call that content and it's gonna be equal to that text. So this is what we want to turn into markdown. So I'll say var content markdown, or I'll say markdown or marked content equals to, and now we wanna use the marked function. So the marked function itself is coming from the marked library, and then we just pass in whatever text we want to render to markdown. So in this case, it's content. So let's actually take a look at these things before we go any further. So I'll do content, uh, I'll, excuse me, I'll do console.log content. And then I'll do that again with marked content. So we can see what those things look like. Um, but of course, before I can even really go through this, I want to get all instances of this content markdown. So instead of just going for how it is right here, I'm just going to change something and add in an iterator that is gonna go through and look for all of it. So I'll do content-markdown and then do each and we'll do function and then we'll do all of this stuff. Paste this in here and now I'll just say instead of content-markdown, I'll say this. Um, okay, so really quickly what this means is, um, of course this is getting into a lot of jQuery stuff, but what this means is, hey, um, for every item in there that has the class of content markdown, let's grab that item. So we're going through each one of them and we're gonna grab it and grab the text and then we're gonna console log that text and then we're gonna make it into markdown and then we're gonna do that. So essentially it's doing a for loop. It's looking for all of these things, each one of them, and then doing all those things I just said. So let's save it and we'll go back into our project and we'll refresh in here. And what we see is we still have this stuff not rendered, right? So it doesn't look like the cheat sheet at all. Um, but it is there. And then if we look at our console, so that's an in inspect element and then console, you'll see the raw code, which is what's showing up here. And then we see all this other stuff, right? So right here, notice it says H1 and it has actual HTML text in here that's coming through. So this is showing us HTML text, uh, but it doesn't look completely right. 
And the reason for that is if we go into post detail, it has to do with this line breaks. So let's get rid of that line breaks, save the content, refresh in here again. Now this content is rendered back where it was before with no line breaks, but the actual, the marked content, which is this, is actually showing it as we want it to. So now all we have to do is replace what's here with what's there. And that's really simple to do. So we go back into base and we just go in here and say this.html and then we put marked content, the variable of marked content. So this stuff right here, we save it, refresh, and now look at that. It's actually coming through as we kind of have expected. Now we've lost something in here, which is the actual, um, co the comment form and all that stuff. And that's just because of what we did here. So I'm gonna change something in just a second, but do note that I got rid of the line breaks and this is now looking like it should on the cheat sheet. So the cheat sheet is here and it's coming the H1 and then all this stuff, right? Alt H1, Alt H2. So it's gonna be slightly different because of our CSS since we are using different kinds of CSS. We're using bootstrap CSS. So these things are gonna be rendered different specifically for that reason, but it is rendering out as far as HTML is concerned, it's rendering out the way that we want it to. It's rendering out exactly the way we want it to just as any sort of HTML text would. So the styling of it is not gonna be identical, but the the tags, the HTML tags, are identical as we see here. Um, okay, cool, so the next part is fixing the comments going away. And the reason the comments are going away is because of where we put the content markdown. We put it inside of this div class. So this div class closes off here, right? So when we said text, it takes out everything in here and replaces it with a new one. So a real simple fix, we cut out this content marketing, or excuse me, content uh, markdown, and we put it here. And we just replace that, close off the div. Oh, let's make sure we close off that one too. And we refresh, and now all of our stuff comes back, right? So it's actually showing back to what it should. Um, so that's, that's pretty important as far as usability is concerned. Now with this feature that we created or this function, very simple function, we can actually copy this and do it several times. Save it, refresh, and notice that it's rendering all of that markdown as needed um, and it's showing up very, very well. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's, that's what we wanna see and that's how we want it to work. But one thing that you might be like, well, do I really have to learn markdown to make this work? Or what if I have an author that doesn't know Markdown, but still wants to use a lot of the features of Markdown. How do we make that work? Now, luckily for us, there is a third party library that we can actually implement on our form that will make that a little bit better. And we'll also implement a better way for the publish date as well. So if you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.